Hello YouTube, this is uh, my version of a GFO and carbon reactor or just carbon reactor or just GFO reactor. Um, I made these. Um, you may notice the design from a similar product that you can purchase on the internet. It uh, is a slightly modified version of what you might be seeing before. These are household water sediment filters. Uh, they also the same kind of filters that would come on a RODI unit. I got these from my local supply company. They were like $15 a piece for my memory. They may have been $12. Um, there's two of them here. There's about $3 worth of plumbing. And then you got to get from uh, Bulk Reef Supply or the filter guys, or there's a couple other websites to get them. Uh, a unit that it's a it's a holder to uh, put inside that holds your media. Um, there's uh, carbon in this one and uh, GFO in this one, or it, it's also sold as a brand name, um, Roa Foz or Fosbane or any number of products. This unit is a milky cloudy one which makes it a little hard to see um, the amount of flow um, tumble there is a clear version which is this is one of them right there which I recommend the clear ones I've only ever seen at bulk reef supply the opaque ones bulk reef supply sells plus uh, the filter guys also sell those they cost as little as three dollars if you sh shop around or they cost as much as ten dollars depending on where you get them from. Um, so it, let's round about the price to $5. So $5, $5 plus the canister is $15, $15. You're talking $40 bucks plus $3 worth of elbows. You know, you are gonna you can make a nice looking reactor for $50 bucks that will hold three cups, three cups, six, six cups. Now, I need to warn you, if you're going to run this off of the preferred pump, which is a Maxi 12, 1200, don't make the thing bigger than 2. If you're going to run it off of a, um, you know, a submersible pump, you can make it as big as 3 or 4. Just keep in mind, if you're using it for carbon, that's no problem. It'll, it'll work great. Or for bio pellets, it'll work great for that because there's not a lot of resistance. If you're going to use it for GFO, don't make it bigger than three. Because what happens is you set the flow on the first one, which is too little for the second one. And if you put a third one of GFO in there, by that time you'd have to have the first one running super um, strong to get the right flow at the end. So it works great for GFO and carbon, or GFO and GFO but don't do a third one. Um, now I'm not using a Maxi 12 to run mine. I'm using my return pump. And I'll show you that setup. Okay. There's a half inch ball valve with a John Gus style press fitting. Um, flexible hose. You can, you can use clear stuff you get at Home Depot. This is a little more higher quality polyethylene type hose, but it's not required. Another John Guest fitting here. This isn't even glued. Um, it's not glued so I can bend it to, in case I move the reactor over this side, I can just adjust the, the flow so the hose can still hook up to it. Um, I then discharge it down under the surface of the water and I even have a directional uh, 45 head on it, but that's not required either. It, it hangs nicely on the front of your sump or the back of your sump. You can even use this as a fish tank filter on the back of a fish tank instead of, buy, instead of buying like an emperor or a hang on the back style. If you did that, you just fill it with carbon. Um, you could also um, put a sediment filter in here. Now you need, if you're going to use this for um, a reactor, a GFO reactor, you need to put either GFO, GFO, and then on the output put a sock to catch 
any particles of GFO that escape. Now what I've done here, instead of using a sock to catch the GFO particles, is the second chamber is carbon. That way if any particles break free, the carbon catches it. So keep that in mind. On this style here, I use GFO, GFO, and typically I use a house sediment filter you buy at Home Depot or your plumbing supply store for a dollar or two dollars. It just collects, you know, particles and uh, it fits nicely in the bat in the last chamber. Although if you're on a budget spending fifteen dollars for the uh, reactor vessel just to put a dollar filter in may not uh, suit nicely for you, but it does work nicely and it's pretty much maintenance free and you can and you can take it to the sink and rinse it off if you want to extend the life of those dollar filters. To change the um, material, use one of these wrenches. You can get these from the filter guys for like a buck. They fit nicely on there. You just uh, put it up on here like that. And it even has direction to tell you which, which way to direct to turn it to, to take it off. Um, downfall to using this method. I can't think of any. Uh, it's very fast, especially if you have extra of these holders. You can prepare the holders and then uh, bring a towel over here. Take the towel up the side of the tank. Um, when you break this free, you're going to lose about a half a cup of water onto the towel. Spin it off. Take the chamber out. Put it in the bucket. Put the new chamber in. Spin it on. Put the wrench on. Give it a, give it a little bit of torque. I've never had one leak. Um, never had any kind of mess of any issues. That's my version of a GFO carbon uh, reactor. You can also, by the way, use bio pellets in these. Um, it's a little bit tough to master the flow if you have more than one loop together, but if you made just one of these and put bio pellets in it and ran it off a pump, it would work fine. Um, I've decided for space purposes to go ahead and go with a commercial bio pellet reactor, which there's a video I just uploaded on my review of this particular one. But I would not, uh, I've, I've had brand name GFO reactors and carbon reactors, and this works better than the leading brand. Um, hope that helps. Bye.